Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, hi, my name is Amy, nice to meet you. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to be doing a review and demonstration on this resin. It's from the Entropy Resins Company and it's their clear cast and epoxy resin. Now, as you can tell from the bottles, it is a 2 to 1 ratio resin by volume. I've been using this resin for a while now, like um, since March of this year. So, I mean, yes, I know it's an overdue review, but hey, it's better late than never, right? So anyway, so since I've been using it for a while, I have a good understanding of this resin and all the pros and cons. So, yes. Now, this video is not sponsored by Entropy Resins. I wish it was, and you'll see why. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at their website because that's where they sell their resin at entropyresins.com. And so here it is. And unfortunately, the smallest kit size they have is the 48 ounce kit. Now, that's a lot of resin as a starter kit or whoever just wants to try the resin because that's a huge commitment but it is what it is, that's the smallest size they carry. And yes, you probably noticed, it is $70 for the smallest size. Very expensive, and that's the downside of this resin is the price. But not only the price of the resin is expensive, but the shipping is expensive. To ship to California, it cost me almost $20 because they use the FedEx ground shipping. So basically I'm spending almost $100 on this resin. So yes, it's very expensive, um, but I do have good things to say about this resin and the pros outweigh the cons. We'll talk more about that in a bit. All right, hello, hi, uh, it's Future Me. Uh, I was editing this video and realized that I should probably calculate the resin price per ounce to be fair because yeah, I know $70 is a lot to throw down at once, but let's remember that it is a 48 ounce of resin you're paying for. So let's calculate, figure out what per ounce would be. So $70 divided by 48 would be $1.46. And if you times that by 16 to figure out what a 16 ounce kit would cost, then the price would be $23.33, which is not bad at all. For a 16 ounce kit, that's probably an average price. So yes, if you look at it that way, the $70 doesn't seem too bad. So perspective, you guys, perspective. Um, but the shipping is too expensive, so I wish they carried a smaller, smaller size. Anyway, that's it, sorry, carry on. You do have choices for the hardener speed. They have slow and fast. I have the fast hardener. The speed of the hardener will dictate how long your pot life is going to be. So if you get slow, you'll get 360 minutes of pot life. That's a very long time. So that would be ideal for someone who does large castings or large batch castings. Now for the fast hardener, which I have here, it's going to give you 90 minute pot life. And that's still a very long time compared to other brands of resin out there. It's almost double because, you know, most resins are, I don't know, what, 40 to 45 minutes of pot life. So that's a plus for me because I'm a very slow crafter and I take my time and I also film. So it does help me to have that extra time. Now for the info and usage tip, which they have the document here on their website. They state that their resin is water clear, UV stabilized, low viscosity, designed for casting, embedding, and high build coating applications. Now, like I mentioned before, it is a two to one ratio resin by volume, but you can also measure it by weight. So if you're using the slow hardener, the weight ratio is 100 to 42. If you're using the fast hardener, it's 100 to 43. Now, I prefer measuring my resin by weight because it's more accurate. So I'll, in the demonstration, I'll show you guys all that. Now for the slow hardener, it's gonna take 72 hours to reach the tack free stage and seven days for full cure. 
for the fast hardener, it's going to take 24 hours for attack free stage and again, seven days for full cure. All right, I think that's it for the intro. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've used this resin before and what you guys think of it. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the demonstration. All right, so like I said before, I'm gonna measure my resin by weight using a scale and it is set to ounces. So I'm gonna first measure the hardener. Now the ratio for weight is 100 to 43. So 100 would be the epoxy resin and then the 43 is gonna be the hardener. Now I'm going to measure 0 0.43 of the, hard of the hardener. Now, if you use base, basic algebra, you can figure out the value. So here's a formula if you guys are curious. But anyway, I'm going to measure 0 0.43 ounce of hardener. Now, as you can see, the hardener is very watery. Whoops, that's a little too much. There. And then one ounce of resin. So we'll tear the scale first, zero it out, and then one ounce of epoxy resin. Now even the resin is very thin. It's very comparable to cooking oil in terms of the consistency. Okay, that's one ounce. And then we're gonna start mixing. Now the odor, the smell is, I would say comparable to Envirotex light. So it's very, it, it is noticeable. Um, comparing it to like Paduo, the recent resin review that I did, like Paduo has absolutely no smell unless you put it up to your nose. But with this resin, I can, I definitely notice the odor. So it's not super strong, but it's not low either. It's like in the middle, I would say. Can you guys see how runny this is? And here I'm just going to transfer over to a new cup so that I make sure that the two parts are mixed very well, scraping side of the cup and everything and then mix again so as you can see there's quite a bit of bubbles but I'm gonna let this one sit for about five minutes or so to let it degasp on its own all right, so for this one, because it has a long pot life, I'm gonna take advantage of that and use the degassing or vacuum chamber to draw out all the bubbles. Okay, so here's a resin that I allowed to degas on its own, and as you can see, there are really no bubbles in here. So we'll go ahead and color this resin and start pouring. Okay, we'll do a clear one here. Do a clear one here. Okay, and then we'll color this one with liquid pigment. Pour this one here. For this one, I'm going to use powder pigment. Pour it in here. Now here's the one that we vacuumed. I'm going to go ahead and start pouring this one as well. Let's get pouring here. 
And then I'm going to color this one opaque white. And we'll do the same color. We'll do the blue. Oops. It's a shaker mold. I forgot to do, I forgot to dome. I'm so sorry guys, I forgot to save some clear resin to dome this. So what I'm gonna do is take some resin from here and put it here. Oops. So since this is a low viscosity resin, I would wait a little bit until it gets a little thicker if you want a high full dome. Okay, I'm gonna run a lighter to pop any surface bubbles. So it's been like, what, three days since I mixed and poured the resin and everything is cured. Now the company does say seven days till full cure, but um, I think three days is good. I mean, I'm sure, you know, seven days for a complete, complete cure, but three days is good enough for me. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the pieces. We'll start with the domed cat, and this is actually a phone grip. And as you can see, it has a very nice, shiny, smooth surface. And the dome itself is kind of on the lower end, and that's because the resin is low viscosity. So um, if you want a higher or a fuller dome, I suggest you know letting it sit for a little bit until it thickens, then you can dome. Now here are the color pieces, and these turned out perfectly fine, no issues. The resin took in the pigments very well. Now let's take a look at the clear pieces and we'll start with the one that we vacuumed in the vacuum chamber. So here's the circle dome and this piece has no bubbles. It is bubble free casting. Now the speck that you see in there is actually contamination from I don't know, lint or dust or something like that. Um, I've noticed that a couple of my pieces have some of those contaminations, so I'm guessing my cup was dirty, I don't know. But anyway, this is a crystal clear resin, absolutely clear, beautiful. And same goes with the heart gem piece here. It is bubble free, again, the stuff you see on the right side of it is contamination. So um, this is also crystal clear, but for some reason, only this one has a yellow tint to it. And I'm guessing because I used a very old handmade mold. I think it's like four or five years old. I'm not sure. And I'm guessing it reacted to it, turning it yellow because none of the pieces are yellow. It's only this one. So very strange. All right, so let's move on to the clear pieces that we didn't vacuum. So again, we'll start with the circle dome. And yes, there are some bubbles here, but remember this is a thicker piece. If it was another brand, it would have more bubbles, like both micro bubbles and large bubbles. But the bubbles in here are large enough for me to pop. I probably should have taken like a heat gun or something and popped these bubbles. Okay, here's another piece that I cast a few days ago. This heart piece is practically bubble free. I mean, maybe there's like two or three bubbles in there, but um, I would say it's bubble free. And this is a fairly thick piece too. I think it's like over a quarter inch. Again, crystal clear. So overall, this resin has an amazing bubble releasing quality. 
you can pretty much get a bubble free casting without the vacuum chamber. Now let's discuss the hardness. So this resin cures rock hard. I mean, even if I try, I wouldn't be able to put a mark on it with my nail or even bend it. So it cures very hard. Okay, so regarding this resin's color stability slash non-yellowing property, Art Resin actually did an eight week experiment comparing different brands of resin on how well they perform with that. They left it under the sun for eight weeks. And I think I referenced this video on one of my resin reviews, but I'll put the link up on the card and also down in the description box. But Entropy Resin did very well. I think it came in the top three. And to be honest with you, I couldn't even tell the difference between the top three. And I think number one being Art Resin, of course. So Entropy does very well with the UV stability. All right, so that concludes the review. Here is a summary of the resin. Comment down below, let me know what you guys think of this resin. Let me know if this is something you would like to try. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, thumbs up give me a like, give me some love, and subscribe if you haven't, and make sure you have that notification bell on so you are notified when I post new videos. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye!